Radio Trade. This is Don Kaufman. November 9th, 2020. A few minutes after the cash close here on a Monday afternoon. Gotta tell you, if being bearish is wrong, then I don't want to be right. This is one of the most wild trading sessions that we've seen literally in years. And, well, we've seen pretty much every trading session in the last couple of years. And uh, I'm going to describe to you exactly why it's such a wild trading session here. <laughs> the other uh, the other aspect, as I said a moment ago, if being bearish is wrong, then I don't want to be right. It's because the S&Ps are up 50. Everybody knows that I'm carrying bearish positions. I mean, I wear that at this point like a badge of honor. And with the uh, with the Dow actually cracking into the 30,000 kind of territory today, all right, not the Dow Jones, but the Dow futures hit 30,000 on the button. The NASDAQ actually exploding to the upside and fading throughout the course of the day. Uh, the S&Ps finishing up 50. Before we go any further, this is the single best trading session that I think I've ever had, but the S&P's up 50, and that's just based purely on P&L. One thing, again, I like to uh, display positions that I'm currently in, and uh, hey, you couldn't be any better set up for this. I'm long the IWM, I'm long the Russell, I'm actually long a couple of Russell futures, I'm short pretty much everything else, I'm short tech, I'm short FedEx, I'm short UPS, I'm short NVIDIA, okay? Any one of those short positions, pick one, other than maybe Caterpillar. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm short Caterpillar too. But uh, net, net, when you are short, and people, I am short this marketplace, but when you're short to the uh, to the extent that I am, and uh, what is that extent? I'm actually short the equivalency of about 3,000, okay, SPY deltas, and I'm actually displaying that right now on your screen. So this is SPY beta wave. You can see there's 1,200 over here, another 200 over here, another 50 down here, and if I actually scroll up, but net, net, when you actually end a trading session, you're up almost $26,000. The S&P's up 50. You're doing something right. And this is the rotation, okay, that we have been looking for people for, uh, for quite some time. And again, to aggregate all of the delta risk I've got is pretty simple, but it is just right around uh, 3,000 uh, short SPY deltas. So you end a day where the S&Ps are up 50, you're short 3,000 deltas, you're still up 25 grand. You know, you just kind of think like, oh, I got away with something on the, on this trading session. But no, net net, we've actually been set up for a convergence and that is the NASDAQ falling and uh, of course the Russell climbing versus the NASDAQ. Now, let's actually get down to business. You know, push my positions aside for a moment. There are some things that happened today that we have to discuss that have changed everything going forward and literally everything the other thing we're going to talk about are advantageous areas okay and areas that i'm going after literally in the next couple of days and areas i started going after specifically today all right obviously the nasdaq you know got crushed into the close the other aspect that you have to be aware of is the uh, the spx when it comes to the spx you guys know i talk incessantly again about expected move everything today was revolving around the expected move inside of the spx so this move and this is from where we started this week till this upper expected move all right we're actually going to call this upper em okay that move is about plus $91. Now we exceeded it. We pulled right back to it. Then we actually dropped inside of it throughout the course of the day. Let me actually display this though on an intraday basis because the edge of the expected move was just a magnet people for the marketplace. So we actually shot up the cash open. We faded right into the edge of the expected move. We skirted it. Okay. Skirted it again and broke lower into the uh, into the close. The fact of the matter is, at this point, there's some damage really done to this marketplace. Now, that's the SPX expected move. Let's actually cruise over to the QQQ, because if you take a look at the Qs, okay, Qs are on the other side of the coin completely. The Qs are actually facing, okay, and about to touch the lower edge of the expected move. That, people, you got to watch throughout the course of uh, the next couple of trading sessions, because the QQQ was just, again, everything I was talking about the weekend video, you know, it's about inefficiency in the marketplace. The QQQ, inefficiencies, inefficiencies, okay? Again, today, the QQQ could make a wild break below the edge of the expected move. And from that point forward, this week, people would be really just dicey. Now, the question is, is the marketplace going to go for it in terms of uh, some sell side activity? Is there going to be, you know, flow through to this? And if you take a look at like the volatility, the volatility, interestingly enough, when was the last time you saw the S&Ps again? Up 50. 
And we've seen some days where the marketplace ends up, but here we have the S&P's up 50 handles, with the VIX actually closing higher. Scroll to the bottom of the screen with me. Take a look, okay? They came in this morning and they absolutely smoked volatility. Yeah, right up until the point they were buying it with both hands. Short-term volatility went through the roof as well. These, okay, warning shots across the bow. Just warning shots of being fired everywhere in this marketplace because it's highly unusual to see sell-side activity hit predominantly the NASDAQ, but the NASDAQ drove volatility higher to the S&Ps. Remember, the VIX, the VIX is all about the S&P 500 volatility index. You see the s and is getting damaged here? Not at all, okay? The other aspect that really resonated with me, the dollar, okay? The dollar, which got smoked on some of this morning's announcement. Again, this morning's announcement, Pfizer comes out, vaccine is about 90% effective, the marketplace loves it and explodes to the upside. They started buying the dollar shortly thereafter. And I got to tell you, in terms of like intraday trade, that people was the greatest tip. And I've been talking about this incessantly that I believe that the dollar is all about risk on, risk off. If the dollar is rallying, it's only a matter of time before they start to see some sell side activity. Now, stranger things have happened, but let's also cruise over to the S&P 100. Take a look at that advanced decline line. The advanced decline line, wicked positive, 70 to 30. S&P is up 50. Doesn't seem to matter. Again, volatility climbed. The dollar climbed on all of this. Clearly, okay, this is all about the financials. The financials not only broke to the upside, that's one of the largest gaps anybody has ever seen in this product, ever. And that's one of the things I was trying to, trying to point out over here. By the way, if there's one product that I am not bearish in, okay, it's the financials. I'm not carrying any short financial positions right now. I am also net net. I am long the Russell. Again, I'm long, you know, IWM. I'm actually long some of the Russell futures out there. I'm long Russell in every way, shape, or form over here. I don't want to get on the wrong side of the financials. Okay. Now, with with that in mind, okay, this break above 2650. At this point in time, the next couple of days inside of the financials would be pivotal. Okay. We could almost put money on the fact that the financials are likely to revert right back to 26.50 in the days to come. That has been an absolutely marquee level. And I'm not just talking about a recent marquee level, not at all, okay? Look back over the last three years. That's been the biggest inflection point inside of the XLF, bar none. Above it has been an incredibly bullish S&P. Below it has been a hideous S&P. It's only a matter of time before we cracked back above it, and we did it in uh, just spectacular fashion today. It's one of the largest, again, the largest breaches of expected move okay, in the history, really, of, again, not just the financial products, but of ETF products in general. That's something I'll actually break down a little bit in the, uh, in the days to come. Again, it's one of the largest breaches of expected move ever inside of a major sector or ETF product. All right, onward and upward from there. So with this, okay, you know, got some bearish positions on, everything played out very nicely inside of Microsoft, inside of Apple. Now, Apple didn't necessarily have a big sell side activity. No, pretty much that came outside of uh, Amazon. Amazon down 5%, Facebook down approximately 5%, and uh, really took some heat right into, and you got to take a look at this, into the cash close. Things just got absolutely hideous. One of the things, though, that kind of stood out to me, I didn't see a huge amount of volume come flooding in over here. This wasn't like, you know, algorithms gone uh, gone crazy inside of uh, Facebook, but there was some nice sell-side activity, and there was an all-out blitz into the cash close. So where do some opportunities lie? Okay, well, before we go too far, we've back to look at the uh, bonds. Let's back up for a second. Look at the bonds. The huge sell side activity in the bonds. Again, it's indicative of what we term the reflation trade. But with bonds, okay, of course, selling off. And if those of you that are experienced in here, you know that that means that the interest rates exploded higher. You've actually got the interest rates on the 10 year back towards 0.95%. Again, 0.95%, a key threshold in the days to come clearly would be the 1% level above 1%. You're thinking, well, the reflation trade, for those of you that understand this a little bit, is a very bullish indication for the overall marketplace. If interest rates are going up, things are doing a little bit better, okay, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, but the unemployment situation is going to come back into scope. Nobody wants to see interest rates go up right now. Meanwhile, they absolutely decimated Okay, the home builders today. The XHB got smoked. Again, this is a position that we've had on for a considerable period of time, bearish positions inside of the X, uh, XHB. At the exact same time, the darlings, anything 
that was a darling during the COVID period, okay, was getting hit. And again, the question is over here, look at Home Depot, gets hit and hit hard, okay? And again, I've got positions in there. Take a look at uh, UPS. I've got positions here in UPS. UPS actually fared, okay, quite well. My other major position here would be FedEx. FedEx took a much, much steeper hit. So again, anything that were, if you will, those darlings of this entire period, and of course, uh, for those of you that really want to geek out, you can take a look over at Zoom. All right, this was like one of the largest losers on the day in terms of major market cap down about 17%. And uh, interestingly and ironically, off some of the lows at one point this morning, it was down over 20% inside of Zoom. Okay, so where do we go from here? Again, I would read heavily into the volatility, but stop right there for a second, okay? You've had wild binary move last week okay today is a binary move in both directions i mean it's crazy right you got the financials ripping to the upside the russell ripping to the upside okay you've got the energy sector a flying by the way that's one thing get this i'm actually long okay happen to be long a little bit in the uh the xle long and xop both energy sector all right which flew to the upside over here again very well positioned for this type of a move today push all of it aside. As I said, this is like, you know, a double binary move where the NASDAQ crack lower, the S&Ps crack higher, where to go from here. I'll tell you what to do in terms of positioning yourself. If you don't want to take a lot of directional positions, you know, one of the easiest things to, be, uh, to really take advantage of in the days to come, take a look at Apple, for example. Fairly mellow on the trading day, right? Got caught in some of the crossfire. But as we look at the chart on Apple, yeah, a little bit of sell side activity. That's not what I want to point out. I want to point out the implied volatility. Look at the profile of the implied volatility. And net net, what do we see? Implied volatility barely picked up at all today. This, okay, is advantageous. I'm actually going to be a buyer of premium in here. And again, I was talking about this in the weekend video. That is where I see, and that is what we should exploit, okay? That's where I see there's opportunity right now to be on the buy side of premium. It's not in every single product. It's just not in every single product. Take a look at Apple, okay? That implied volatility is inherently low. It's not at the lowest point since COVID kind of kicked off, but net net, the point that I'm trying to make is you're getting a huge movement in the underlying. Huge movement in the underlying, and the implied volatility is not that much. Take a look at something like Netflix. And Netflix, I did actually go ahead and execute this position today. What I have on is a buy side iron condor. It's a buy side iron condor. It's called a gamma iron condor. So I'm looking for explosive moves in either direction inside of Netflix. Why? I don't know. Look where the implied volatility happens to be. It doesn't, you know, again, I'm not here to tell you this is not a darling. This was one of the darlings, if you will, of the COVID, you know, error. And it is seeing some sell side activity, but I couldn't tell you what it's going to do in the days to come. All I can tell you is the implied volatility is inherently low. So I just pointed out Apple, looked at Netflix, again, Microsoft. Okay, what do I have on Microsoft? Microsoft, same animal. Okay, I actually have a buy side iron condor inside of Microsoft. Then, I, you know, let's get out of tech land. Look at something like Goldman Sachs. And Goldman Sachs had a profitable buy side iron condor on literally about a week ago, pulled it off okay, before the election. But take a look how low. Again, this thing exploded to the upside. You're going to tell me right now what? Goldman Sachs is going to stop moving? Of course they're not going to stop moving. This thing is either going to blow into some what? Some kind of recent highs or it's going to fall apart at the seams. But either way, I'll tell you what, I'll take it because this is one of the lowest implied volatility instances of really any of the financials since the onset okay, and the COVID crash. With that, again, just a wicked bifurcated trading session today. You know, if you, uh, if you just, I guess, tuned in and, you know, late in the day, you're like, huh, Look at the size of that move, okay? If you're, if you're into technicals and so forth, you want to call it a key reversal, you go ahead and do so. Because I'll tell you what, inside of the NASDAQ, absolutely unequivocally, very, very much a key reversal, closing very close to the lows of the session. Same thing in the S&Ps. I mean, net, net, okay? What did we have? The Russell? The Russell was limit up. Limit up a 7% move. Limit up now is a 7% move. 7% move explodes to 1815 only to reverse, okay, a hundred handles into the close. These are the kind of sessions I'm telling you as a trader, okay, you dream about these days. And again, net, net, when the S&P is close up 50, you're carrying bearish deltas and you walk away, not only unscathed, but up on the day. It is spectacular. As I said, to begin this, okay, and to end it, yeah, if being bearish is wrong, then I don't want to be right. Thanks everybody for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.